The Volkswagen Golf is one of the most legendary hatchbacks. No, scratch that. The Golf is one of the most legendary vehicles of all time. But for 2022, we will no longer be getting the Golf in the United States. Well, kind of, we will only be getting two variants of the Golf. The GTI and this. My name is Omar and this is the 2022 Volkswagen Golf R. By the way, I just found out that you can talk to this thing. Hey, Volkswagen, my butt is cold. All right, oh. warming the left front seat now. I wonder what happens if I use profanity. Hey, Volkswagen, my ass is cold. Sorry? Mm -mm. Nope, she doesn't like that. So, is it quick? Yes, it is very quick very quick. All of a sudden, I really don't care if we don't get the regular Golf making around 200 horsepower here in the United States because I would much rather have this any day of the week. The Golf R is powered by a four-cylinder turbo engine pumping out 315 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. It's made it to a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission, and if you live in North America, you can get it with a six-speed manual. That's right, only the North American market will have the option of a six-speed manual transmission. I'm driving the 7-speed DSG and it is absolutely outstanding. I would much rather have this over the manual. The shifts are extremely, extremely fast. Just take a look. Three, four, five, back down to four, three, no problem. This is insane. Now you do have a couple of drive modes that you can go through and I'll break them down in a little bit, but just take a listen to how the sound changes in each one of these modes. This is how it sounds in comfort. And that's how it sounds in race, but in special mode, it sounds amazing. It sounds great on the inside, but how does it sound on the outside? Snap, crackle, and pop. Did you hear that? Sounds good, and thank God it doesn't have a rev limiter, but I have to say it does sound better on the inside when you're driving it. But yeah, in terms of performance, this thing is super quick. This is the fastest production Golf ever. Honestly, it feels really fast all of the time. Even when you're driving like a normal human being, it's asking you to push it harder and harder. It'll do zero to 60 in the mid four seconds. I've done it in 4.3 seconds. I believe Car and Driver has done it in 3.9 seconds which is a bit unbelievable to me because that would put this in the Audi RS3 category now compared to the Audi S3 that I recently tested. This is definitely sharper and faster. So yes, the new Golf R is more agile. It's more dynamic. It's faster and it handles a lot better than the outgoing one. And that is thanks to a new adaptive chassis control system, which continuously controls the damping force on each wheel 200 times per second. So it's always ready for what you're going to throw at it. Whoever thought that the Golf would become this sophisticated, I almost feel like you can put more than 315 horsepower in this thing and it would handle it like a champ. I'm honestly worried to see if the new Civic Type R can live up to this. That said, it's not all on the up and up. The interior has virtually no buttons and we'll talk more about that in a few seconds. But if you're a fan of physical buttons, you're not gonna be very happy in here. The worst part is that your climate and your volume controls don't even light up at nighttime. The interior isn't difficult to get around once you get used to it, but it isn't intuitive. I get that a lot of people will just plug in their phone and use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but even the basic controls aren't basic enough. So do I recommend dropping over $44,000 on a Golf R? That's right, the Golf R now cost around the same as an Audi S3, the BMW M240i, and the Mercedes AMG CLA 35. Let's find out. Let me give you a quick tour of the new Golf R, and then I'll give you my opinion on whether or not if you should spend your hard earned money on one, make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's do this. Okay, so before we get into the pricing details and the exterior and interior, let's take a look at some of the cool and interesting things that you should know about the new Golf R. Now, first I want to kick it off by talking about the drive modes you're working with, comfort, sport, race, drift, special, which is really Nürburgring and custom. Now, comfort and sport are pretty self-explanatory. Race mode, which can actually be activated by hitting this R right here on the steering wheel, is basically your sport plus mode. 
put it in drift mode, which Volkswagen warns over and over again is only for when you're on the track, put it in this mode and this thing will send all the available rear torque to the outside wheels so you can drift very, very easily. Special mode, AKA Nurburgring mode is basically like Sport Plus Plus. This is the mode you want to use when you're on the track, specifically on the north loop of the Nurburgring. As you can see, Volkswagen says here, the race driving profile is better suited for race courses without the unique characteristics of the North Loop, meaning the Golf R specifically has a mode for the North Loop of the Nürburgring. That's pretty cool. And then of course you have custom mode where you can go through and customize various settings to fit your wants and needs. Now I'm probably about to make some of you very upset. The some of you that really love buttons because the Golf R has none. Well, it does have buttons technically, but they are touch capacitive buttons, not actual physical buttons. So instead of a real volume knob, you have a volume slider. In fact, you have a bunch of sliders everywhere. Want to change the temperature? Well, you got to slide. Want to change the track you're listening to from the steering wheel? You got to slide. Want to increase or decrease the volume from the steering wheel? Can't be a slider. Nope. Wait, never mind. You got to slide. All right, let's open the sunroof because surely, no, you got to slide. So yeah, everything here is touch sensitive from these buttons right here, here to the left of the gauge cluster, your steering wheel, everything. Even the lights, you don't just push them and turn them on, they are touch sensitive. And when you tap them, you hear a clicking sound like you're typing on your cell phone. That's interesting, but kind of annoying. Wait, found a real button right here. The SOS button is a real button. And the engine start stop and the parking button are also real buttons. So I guess that's because of a safety concern. Now let's talk about tech. The Golf R comes standard with a 10 inch touchscreen display that houses V-Dub's new MIB infotainment system. You get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard along with navigation. It's a pretty simple system to use, although there is a bit of a learning curve. I don't see many people hanging outside of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto these days, so I'm not going to dive too deep into the system. Two things that I do wanna point out is that when you switch up the ambient lighting, which you have 30 colors to pick from, it will also change the color of the whole infotainment system. Second, I love the way you go through and adjust the settings of the driver assist tech. It's not just some boring list, but a cool graphic that will teach you about what each safety feature does. By the way, I do wanna point out, yes, it's not fun that all the climate settings are housed in the infotainment system. And a lot of people have really complained about how the heated seat controls are also kept in the climate screen. So at first you would hit the heated seat graphic here and then that will pop open the climate menu and you would turn on the heated seats from here. Well, I discovered this when I was testing the ID4 a while back. You can double tap the temperature slider to turn the heated seats on or off. So that's a quick shortcut. Now the big tech news for the 2022 model year is this Volkswagen Digital Cockpit Pro. This 10.25 inch display is very crisp, very sharp and insanely configurable. You have a few viewing modes, including a full screen map view, my personal favorite theme is this one right here with the tack right in the middle. But yeah, this thing is packed with information and Volkswagen says there are 21 viewing options, which is a bit much. All right, let's speed up the cool and interesting features part with a quick rapid fire session. Otherwise, we're going to be here all day. Check out this gear selector. Are you a fan or no? I'm kind of on the no side. The Audi S3 that I just tested had the same one. The cup holder has a holder for smaller drinks and it hugs it tightly so it doesn't spill over while you're on the track. The heated steering wheel has three levels of heating. I think that may be the first time that I've seen that. And Volkswagen, I love you, but why? Why is the passenger seat manual? This is a $44,000 plus car. Why is the passenger seat manual? Speaking of pricing, let's get into the pricing details. Now, I'm not sure how many of you know this, but we will no longer be getting the regular Golf in the United States, which means we just have the Golf GTI and the Golf R. The Golf GTI starts right under $30,000 and the Golf R starts at $44,640 if you get it with a six-speed manual and $45,440 if you get it with a seven-speed dual clutch. And at that price tag, everything is standard just like it should be. Starting on the outside, every Golf R comes standard with LED headlamps and LED daytime running lights. You also get that cool signature Volkswagen light bar that you see on every new Volkswagen these days. You get LED tail lights on the back and they look really sharp. The Golf R comes standard with 19 inch wheels that look really dope. And this cool signature R puddle light that looks really nice. Hop inside the Golf R and you get R design Napa leather seats that are pretty comfortable. The front seats are heated and cooled as standard. You also get heated rear seats so the back passengers can stay warm, and you also get a really cool looking steering wheel that is heated, all as standard. Tech-wise, everything I showed you earlier is standard, including the infotainment with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and navigation. The really cool digital instrument display is also standard, along with the Harman Kardon sound system. Safety and driver assist tech-wise, you get a rear view camera, no 360 camera here. You also get adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, rear traffic alert, road sign recognition, front collision warning, high beam assist, 
a heads up display, which is really nice. And this thing will also automatically park itself. All this is standard. So yeah, you're pretty much packed and ready to go. And you should be for a golf that cost over $44,000. All right, in terms of horsepower and torque, power comes from a two liter four cylinder turbo engine pumping out a total of 315 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. And it's mated to a seven speed dual clutch transmission. Again, you can get a six speed manual, but only in North America. Now with the seven speed dual clutch, you can do zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. I did it in just 4.3 seconds. Others have done it much quicker, like I said earlier, and you have a top speed of 155 miles an hour. As for fuel economy, the Golf R will give you 23 city and 30 highway. You have a 14.5 gallon tank capacity. I'm averaging after a few days of driving a total of 23.9 miles a gallon. Not bad. On this trip alone, I'm only averaging 10 miles a gallon. So you can see I've been driving pretty crazy. Let's take a look at the exterior design of the new Golf R. This is definitely one of the classiest hatchbacks out there. The Golf R goes head to head with the likes of the Honda Civic Type R and the Hyundai Veloster N. And unlike those two, it does performance in a very subtle way. So subtle that it doesn't have any crazy color to offer you besides the lapis blue that you see here. Other than this, the only other colors that you have to pick from are black and white. That's it. Besides what I already covered, every Golf R comes standard with these cool R blue brake calipers. Those look really nice. You get matte silver mirror caps, which I really like the look of. A panoramic sunroof is standard. And this R-line designed rear spoiler, which isn't screaming, hey, look at me, I'm fast, like the Civic Type R. All right, let's check out the cargo capacity really quick because I can't stand outside. It is brutally cold. Once you pop open the tailgate, you have 20 cubic feet behind the second row. And with the second row folded, you have 34.5 cubic feet. Not bad. Let's take a seat inside the new Golf R and honestly, a lot of people will have a love it or hated relationship with it. I understand the lack of buttons is super frustrating, but it does make for a very simple and clean interior. There's no crazy edgy design in here. Well, besides the fake carbon fiber trim on the dash right here, the carbon fiber leather vinyl or whatever that is, and the little bit of blue that you have here on the seats, you have a little bit of blue on the front and on the back of the rear headrest. But yeah, other than that, it's a pretty basic interior. Now, is it high quality? Yes and no, a lot of the touch points are pretty solid, but there are some areas where Volkswagen cut costs, like here. And then I found something very odd. The front door armrest area is nice and soft touch, right? But the rear door is hard plastic. What's up with that? So yeah, there are a blend of high quality and plastic materials in this cabin. Now let's check out the rear legroom. You have a total of 35 inches of legroom back here. I'm about six foot tall. That is my seating position, as you can see. It is pretty tight back here, but you do have an extra set of pockets here to put your cell phone while it's charging. Pretty cool. And before I give you my opinion on how the Volkswagen Golf R stacks up against the competition, let me point out a few random things that I'll have to show all of you. You have four cup holders, two in the front, and then you have two in the back right there. Here are what the keys look like to the Golf R. Pretty nice set of keys. You got a nice little R logo on the back. Door open and close sound from the outside. And from the inside, for a V-Dub, that's pretty solid. Charging game-wise, you're working with two USB-C ports right there and a wireless charger for the front passengers. Rear passengers are working with two USB-C ports right down there. This review better get a ton of views because I've been filming all day and it is super cold. It is 19 degrees right now. I started the morning off with like eight degrees. All right, it is now time for an indicator and horn sound test here with the 2022 Volkswagen Golf R. Indicator first. Same old V-dub indicator. Now for the horn sound. Oh my God. This is the first time I've honked it. And that is a solid horn for a tiny hatchback. I like it. And now that I've given you a tour of the new Golf R, let me give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy one. All right, let's get to it. Oh man, I really love this thing. I might get murdered for this, but I would definitely buy this over the Audi S3, the BMW 2, the AMG CLA 35, not the 45. That said, there is no way that in today's climate, you're picking up one of these at MSRP. See, the thing about hot hatchbacks like the Honda Civic Type R, the Veloster N, and the Golf R is that you're supposed to have outstanding performance at an affordable price tag. Once that price tag tops $40,000, it's no longer a bargain. I hope that when the new Civic Type R comes out, it manages to keep the price under $40,000 Interestingly enough, I was supposed to test drive the new GTI this week instead of this, but scheduling got mixed up and I got to test drive the R before the GTI. The GTI has always been one of my personal favorite hot hatchbacks, 
that thing is a bargain when it comes to performance. The Golf R, on the other hand, is no longer a bargain, but I have to say, if I'm willing to buy this over the luxury pocket rockets, it must be doing something right. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. God, I'm gonna miss this thing. Oh yeah, snap, crackle, and pop. Love it.